Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com. Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show and this Legends special celebrating 1967, the 25th of May. That was the day that Celtic clinched the European Cup. And I couldn't think of a better Road to Lisbon special than in the company of two Lisbon Lions, Jim Craig and Bertie Alder, with me and Ruffy to take us from that journey in Zurich in Switzerland all the way through to Portugal and that great day in Lisbon. So let's cut to the chase and the story of how they got there to the final against Inter Milan. Uh, you guys, all the way through, um, I don't think anyone was thinking of the European Cup final. It started off in Zurich and again in 1967, there wasn't too much information about them. Um, what were your thoughts on the game and the plan ahead? They gave you a very brief, didn't they? Yeah. I mean, as a fullback, I would like to have known how fast the winger was. On a personal basis, yeah. right? because that can break my day sometimes. If he's quicker than me, I can't afford to give him too much in the way of space, you know. So I would like to know that. But, that, that, but whoever you send <laughs> wouldn't go into a great detail like that. Yeah. They'll give you an overall picture of how the team played and the system and stuff like that. The know? most important thing about it was, as you know, this is the first time we were in the European Cup, which was honestly, it was exciting. The whole dressing room was looking forward to it and such like because we'd we'd seen the Barcelonas, the Real Madrids and everything and, and, and honestly. And also some of the English teams that had qualified for it and that. But the the boss had in his makeup, he knew the capability of us and never changed it entirely. What he would do, he would give you a wee rough thing, this is the way they play, 4 three, three, but he never went in depth about it. No. And he would say, this guy's a bit nice, he's a bit useful, he plays off the striker, but I'll tell you, he's got a bit of pace yeah. and such like. But it was more in our, how we... Cool. Controlled we, the game. You well, know you certainly I mean? imposed yourself on them 5-0 over the two legs. Yeah. Mm. And he never changed. Home or away. And the most important Peter about that particular time, it wasn't the fourth in the division, it was the, cha the champions of whatever country it was, you yeah. know what I mean? And the, here again, he turned around and he, and, and he would take you to like a sea mill and such like and take the heat out of the situation. And he would, he would have you in this lawn. You must have been down mm -hmm. there roughly when you yeah, were at yeah. Celtic Park. And he'd put you in this lawn and he'd say, Who brought the cones? Oh, nearly. Did you? No, I never brought them. Get into that. See that wee hot there, get in there, and they'd br uh, bring out empty paint tins, you know what I mean? And they'd put the paint tins there, that's the goal, that's that goal, and that's that goal up here. And it was just a lawn, it was a, the, the, the size of your studio here, you know, which yeah. was crazy. But that's what like he was. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, maybe Murdy would hit one or two uh, <laughs> coats. And, it, and the ball went out of the sea, that's and, right. out of the <laughs> sand, <laughs> and you were down, down and get it. Go and get your and ball. then all of a sudden, they, they would say, right, that's enough, too much, carry on. And he would say, Barry, what did you do that for? Right, stand behind the two paint tins and look into the sea and keep watching it there. So the game's going on here, and I'm a married man with a family, and I'm looking out to the sea, <laughs> and the game's going on here. <laughs> Things like that, you know what I mean? I think the other thing you must take into account, of course, was no away goals counting double back then. You know, that didn't come in until 69, so yeah. um, uh, you, you've got to take that into account because it's a big factor of games now, isn't it? When yeah. you, you can go abroad and try and, you know, score. It's a good yeah. point you make because obviously in, in the latter stages coming up, which we'll, we'll obviously talk about late, late winners mm. um, that eventually get you to Lisbon, yeah. but, but none. I can't really remember an awful lot about none. Wasn't there, so I can't help you. And no. but I can we beat them, that was the main thing. That's yeah, a very good point. 3 1 in France, Bertie. That's right. And, and, and 3 1 at home. Mm -hmm. French football not regarded too highly at that time, really. You know, it got better later on when let's say ATN came in, even yeah. just a couple of years later. Uh, yeah, better, but they don't weren't too highly regarded. I'll tell you one team that does stick in your mind, though. Um, you, you ease past non Vosges Vedina. Yeah. Oh, God. Best team we played, I think, all the way through. Without fear. Yeah. 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 It, it, but funny enough, Novi Sad was a really strange place when I went to it. Do you remember? It was really kind of primitive, you know? The only certain streets I remember were tarmac and stuff like that, you know? There was a lot of kind of uh, dirt tracks in the outskirts of town and stuff. And, and nearly took us a walk and we got completely lost. Oh, <laughs> God, That was always exciting there because 
he followed the Glasgow principle of everything being as squares and if you kept turning you know you'd eventually come back to it sad, but not every town <laughs> was like that and we had some really interesting moments in, in Ajax we went down the Karlstrasse where all the girls sitting in the window in Prague he took us through an army barracks where they were all in parade so it was really fascinating that walk just before and uh, Lisbon was the same can you remember Lisbon the, the, the Aye, night before the, night the before European God, Cup final yeah. he nearly was a superstar do you know yeah. see if you look at his uh, career he, He'd, he'd won two uh, cup finals mm -hmm. before he played Great at Celtic place, Park, yeah, yeah. but he was tremendous for humour, taking the, taking the uh, edge off it and such like. And the night before the Lisbon game, nearly did exactly what you say. We went up to see. Went along the prom and then up to a friend of Jock. Lennox, 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 he was, he was yeah, a yeah, golf yeah. character. And it was an international television. England were playing somebody at Wembley, and we went and the fans were beginning to come to the hotel. And Jock wanted us out of the road for a while, night. So we're coming back down the hill and she saw the sign, Palatio. I says, what, we'll take a shortcut. Aye, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. We're down the hill, climb the wall. And our fence, Peter, it must have been 12 foot high. The night before the European Cup final. And he says, right, he says, the easiest way, we'll climb up there and get out of that way and that'll get us to the hotel. We were jumping off the trail. <laughs> Right before the European Cup uh, No fear of injury. Yeah. Um, what was the spe I mean, a lot of people might not appreciate the fact that, you know, you play against a team like Vojvodina, you've already said that they're the best team that you've mm. played to get yeah. there. Um, the, the great thing about them, you know, it wasn't exactly a great recruitment. It was quite simply the best players had to play for the top team. What I remember about them, Peter, was that they were a, they were a very good team. And, and to me, that was the hardest game we had because they had at the back four they were very very strong and defensively and they were a system that they, they believed in individually collectively but the other thing was that as, as a, that was the first time that we realized at the level we were playing at because we found it difficult to open them up and such like yeah and if you remember rightly it, it was one of big Billy's magnificent headers yeah. that got us through if you remember rightly yeah. and that's how close it was you did know? you fear you were going did you fear at any no. point you were going out no. after losing the, 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 the game over there no, no? because I, I can't remember I think it was did he, did he blame Big Tommy or something well, Tommy had a short pass back so, and, 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 and he blamed gave him. the goal over there but no we, I think we were we weren't exactly panicking but we were putting a lot of effort in that's right was, <laughs> I, but the, the thing is that <laughs> and, at time up there were one or there <laughs> I wonder if to complain about Tommy doing this, but that was the type of character Tommy was. Uh, you know, he was a showman and, and, and it was part of the first time you for a short pass back to deal with, isn't it? <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, we, and one or two people said to him, which they did, on the park, but they did in the dressing room. That was all your fault. And, so it's like, and Jock stopped it there and then he says, here, that's enough of that. Tell me, what about the goals he scored and brought us through? Mm. And yet, if he had went in, and being himself, what he usually did, sometimes he would knock you down. Yeah. You know what I mean? He would tell you about the things that you should have done and tell you that even if you had a bad game, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? He would turn around and say, what about that pass? What have you fallen up with? That was who it was. He lifted was, you up and knocked you down. I, barely, I was telling Peter that I, was, I think I was 16 at the time and I went with my mate that night to the game uh, in the stadium. And that was the first time I'd ever been to the game that the atmosphere was, it was un electric, wasn't unbelievable it? In, in that stadium. I'll never ever forget it. That, that night, everything just, the, the buzz in the place was absolutely But it was fantastic. as if it had all been sort of planned because um, the goals came near the end, you know, yeah. so there was this period of play to begin with where the play was good but nothing had happened and then Billy's goal and then Stevie, you know. And See, what the boss uh, did, the, Peter, and, and he, was, he was a very shrewd, shrewd man, and you had to be a fool not to listen to him and, and take things in, on board. What he did, Alan, in the dressing room, as you know, you've been there in that dressing room. Now, that was the walkway now, it's coming up to there. The boss opened up the top windows, which was all cobbled stones, and people would go off at the bottom of London Road. And they would come up with their boots on, they'd maybe come straight from work and all of a sudden you could hear the patter, the pitter, patter, the, the feet going up the cobblestones as they were getting closer and closer to you. Try pitching, <coughs> the window's been open, you pulling on your jersey, getting your boots on and such like, and all of a sudden you tip for tat, tip for tat, and they were getting closer. And then as they were getting near the turnstile, you heard tick, tock, 
tick tock, and then as you get then the turnstile into the stadium, you could hear the singing going. So you could, but you were part. They they became part of the dress room. You know what I mean? And you could picture it. You, the, you were you could have got out quick enough, mm -hmm. Alan. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's what was the most important thing. Well, Incidentally, you mentioned Joe McBride earlier on. He was taken out of hospital that night to come to the game yeah. and then driven back again afterwards. He oh. I can imagine how he must have felt that particular night, yeah. you know? Yeah. All this happening, that he was a member of... Two nurses the, came with him, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, the first yeah. two matches, or well, the first four matches, you yeah. know, two rounds. Well, listen, we're going to talk more about Joe McBride coming up after the break. We'll also talk about Willie Wallace, the master himself, Jock Steen. And we'll start to look towards those other games, including Dukla Prague. All of that coming up on the road to Lisbon after the break. Welcome back to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show and this Legends special. We're in the company of two Lisbon Lions, Bertie Auld and Jim Craig. Join Ruffy and myself, Peter Martin. Well, let me just paint a picture of Celtic against Inter Milan. Uh, the stats are absolutely incredible, 64% possession. I'm looking at shots, uh, you know, and goal attempts, 42 to their five. You've got 24 on target. Um, I mean, it was just, it seemed like wave after wave. It seemed, as I look at many a Champions League final, as I look back on many a European Cup final of yeah. champions of countries, I, I, I've never witnessed, and I've watched the game on several occasions, I've never missed witnessed a more one-sided final. Yeah. Especially against a goalkeeper who was regarded as Sarty. a little bit suspect. Nah, he was the one who was, was said to us. He was the one, one my, my man in the team that Jock said, I don't think the keeper's up to much. No, know. no. Yeah. <laughs> what a day he chose to prove him wrong. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we always knew with the Italians, Jim, when we seen him in, in, in play, and I've seen him at home here in Scotland playing in Scottish football and in, 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 uh, European ties. As soon as they scored, they seemed to just go into a shell and just come back. A wee bit something similar has happened in our own game here just now. You know what I mean? They don't come out and express themselves. They killed the game and they just got people behind the ball, Alan, you know, and it was difficult to break them. But we had this flair and we had these goal scorers that we speak about. I mean, Tommy Gemmell, some of the goals, I mean, the two goals that went at Lisbon, they go down in the history as the greatest ever goals. Yeah. That one that Tommy Ten and the, 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 the game itself, the importance of the game. For him, he hit that. Kearney did something right that day. He cut the ball across and Tommy, <laughs> and, and the ball was bobbling roughly. Mm -hmm. He was a crisp pass. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask you uh, again? I'm glad you mentioned him because um, they get a penalty. Nah. You didn't think it was a penalty. Nah, um, no. what, what, what was good through your mind? He's bursting into the box. Did you yeah. know that they were they were prone to that? He was, you know, a left-footed player going down the inside right channel. So he's going to pull the ball back to go on his left foot, and I ran across his path, and Damn it went down. Yeah. <laughs> it was a penalty. But I tell you, what, um, <laughs> the Stefano said it wasn't a penalty. The Pope said it wasn't a penalty. Yeah. <laughs> but they were on your side. <laughs> you know? So enough people other. said it wasn't a penalty. Yeah. Jock said to me at, uh, at half time, forget about it. Come on, go on with the game. You're doing fine. And at half at full time, he said, that was a bloody stupid. And the rest, <laughs> okay, the rest of you didn't say that. Okay. Actually, and you were quite nice at half time. Yeah. Straight up, <laughs> it was a very nice ah, all of yeah. you. But, I, mean, I, I thought, thought honestly, what it was, it was just to make a game of it. Can I ask you something, though? You, you, you've gone a goal behind against a side, you know, Catanaccio. They're famous. They get a goal up. They shut up shop, yeah. and you guys are going at them non-stop. I think you hit the bar as well. Yeah, right. uh, you know, there's chance after chance. Sarti's playing out of his skin. Was there a moment when you thought, oh, this isn't going to happen? Never, never any time. Never, no, at never at any no. time. No. If no, you have no. a look at the goals that we scored in the first minute and the last minute, that whole season, it was something special. But at half time, Jock was so positive and everything he says, what well, he's just playing, this is one of the best games you've played in. He says, you're making chances, keep it going. You've cut it back. Mm. Gemmel, he says he's 20, 20 odd yards out in the centre of the goal when he hits this. This is your left back. I, know, I, know. Uh, I mean, it was a, it well, was a stunning goal. Must have lifted you Could I say he shouldn't have been there because I was there already, right? <laughs> and the plan was one up, one back, mm -hmm. right? But with all due respect, Peter, we're nearing the end of a game and we're one down and. You know, we're not all thinking straight at that time, so that was why two of us suddenly came up with an attack. Yeah. You know? See, when you score at yeah. that point, you must have thought to yourself, we've got them. It's only 1-1, but we've got them. 
Yes, I think it gave us a great boost, eh? Well, there's no doubt about it. For yeah. you, you get one and finding one in your mind. It's a boost, aye. But, uh, no, as you can appreciate, honestly, these were things that was worked on continuously at the end of every training session, whether it was set pieces, throw-ins. I mean, that's what we did all the time, yeah. roughly. You know, and, and one of these ones was... A, Either month, somebody comes in here post which, which Stevie did, pulled somebody out, he would cut it back in a situation to an area that he knew either murdered myself or someone would be in that position because we worked at it. Yeah. It was come in and So you're telling me Chalmers, the goal to win it yeah. is training. I Where promise the training you mm -hmm. more that, than more than anything else. Yeah. Where are the training did, and, your, and did your heart stop for a minute because they actually thought it was offside, didn't they? Ah, they yeah, did, because they they went went so did the goalkeeper, yeah. so did the goalkeeper. Yeah, he claimed straight away, yeah. But you, yeah. I, I thought the referee had a good game that day, you yeah. know, he's German, yeah. and, and it was, it was fun well, to go to these places. Well, apart from one incident after five minutes, so he was... Well, like, I yeah. thought he got it right that day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I thought a minute it might have got sent off, but you know, make a different <laughs> game here, you know. You're 2-1 up, you're on the verge of winning the European Cup. Um, I mean, I don't think they offered anything after you scored the goal. I mean, was there, was there a scary well, moment? I think the, 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 well, I can't remember when Ronnie's back heel occurred. What moment was that? I'm glad you mentioned that oh, because that was the first half, wasn't before it? Before this programme started, I said, I'm going to show you one piece of footage um, because everybody uh, remembers the goals, they remember, you know, the great players yeah. and everything. And I said to Ruffy, I'm about to show you a piece of footage here when Ronnie Simpson, in a European Cup final, <laughs> plays a back heel when he's pressured and he's 20 yards outside his box and he said no chance and I said watch this yeah. and how, how, long, how long was it to go then? Well, well, I don't know that. Was that well, I think was that was the first half. No, no, was it was the second, second, second half. It was at the left hand. I didn't end, think you know, they got into half of the part in the second half. You know how people say they wet themselves when they don't really? Well, I did. <laughs> so, no, absolutely Peter, Peter better, right? sight when he was yeah. sight it. Can I just say to you, You've won the cup. They've blown the whistle. The fans are on, which is, which is great. The fans want to celebrate it as well. The one disappointment that I think, you know, especially when you mm. you speak to your captain, who is, you know, the greatest ever Celtic captain, Billy McNeil said he wanted you guys to be there on the podium with him. Sure. Yeah. Well, I can only say that Billy was the only one who went up these stairs because the rest of us were knackered. <laughs> <laughs> like Billy only headed a couple and two. And I'll tell you something, I've, you know, and I remember I spoke to Billy about it, he didn't want to go back out again because the, the fans were just flocking around everywhere. In yeah. fact, Sean got a car for him to go around the other side mm. of the stadium. Well, well, you mean after the yeah. Isn't that a strange picture of him uh, walking through a car park with a European uh, Cup? Yeah. I don't know when it was the last... I don't, I don't think we've seen much of the Cup, did we? No, because we, we were already near enough when Billy comes in. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? By so the time Billy comes from there... Because the photographs were taken afterwards were dressed. Where's your medal? In the bank. Still keep it. Ah, uh, yeah. Of course. Uh, yeah. Very much so. Good. Does it? Do, do you look? Do you ever get a chance? You say it's in the bank. You say it's somewhere special. Do you ever just take it out and have a wee look at it? Is it, or is it just the memories that flood in your I mind? I only brought it out when I was manager of Thistle. When yeah. some of them were hopeless, I used to say, "There, you have ever seen one of them?" But uh, you know, the I think the mental memories are the, are, are the best thing of yeah. all. You know, and it, it, I, I think um, that's what. Really just, just as a matter, you, you never yeah. saw the, court, the the cup getting presented and that. How did you get your medals? They well, were. Oh God, that, that was, was about an hour after story. it in yeah. a restaurant. Yeah. And we here, this is no kidding. We're all waiting and such like. And we're, I've got Joe, I've got Joe McBride because Joe and I had a pub called the Sidelines in London Road. So he was, he was a partner with me and he was down a bit. Peter and I got had him. I says, "You'd have been playing." Whether they would have not, I don't know. And you've asked that question before. And then all of a sudden, in comes this official, UEFA official, and he's got a shoebox. <laughs> I mean a shoebox. And he's brought it in and he says, right, and he'd say, whoever, where's the team? And we were all standing there. And he went into the shoebox, opened <laughs> the shoebox, and he gave you this medal. Medal, and that's Plus it, that's it, mm -hmm. that's wow. it. Mm -hmm. And that's what he gave them. I, I presume it would be great if I could give you one wish just to get all the boys back round mm -hmm. one more time together to share that particular memory. I mean, of the players, can you still see them strutting the stuff, some of those guys that are no longer with us? Right. It's, it's never out your mind. Memories will never fade. It's fabulous. Yeah. 
Off on the park, yes, because it, that was what that was our job. Off the park, great characters, magnificent. And do you do you still see that? You know, do you still see Murdoch pinging the pass, Jinky going past few? You know, those three or four players that they were special. They, special yeah, they times. were special because it was part and part of it. See, as a person away from the park, away from playing the football. He was something special. I mean, we used to go to the golf and the, the, the laughter. You were away for two and three hours and never like that. You, you would speak about the, the games, you would speak about the performances and such like. But as an individual, he was a superstar. Last question. The 25th of May, 2017. 50 years. It's, it's, time has flown in. Do you ever yeah. get tired of talking about it? Not at all. No. I Big never, moment of your life. I so never get you, tired yeah. talking, I never get tired going into their company, the supporters' company, because their grandfathers and their grandparents and that, and then their fathers, and then now it's mm -hmm. the sons, and they all have one thing in common, they're Celtic supporters. Uh, the 25th of May 1967 will live long in the memory, uh, decades, centuries after we're long gone. To Jim Craig, to Bertie Old, from Ruffy and myself, Peter Martin. Thanks for watching this Legends special. Good night. Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com.